Okay, good evening everyone. Shalom Aleichem, Bruch Abam. I'm glad everyone came to the shirt tonight. We have a major subject this evening. The fate of Yishmael and the end of days. We're continuing this year in Sefer Bracious, which are graciously sponsored by Dr. Zakam and Mishpachta, Lila Nishmas, Rav Shalom Eliezer, Ben Rav Yaakov Zakaim, and Lila Nishmas, Dr. Zakaim's mother, Rivka Bas Tavi Halevi, Beganeden Temenu Chasam, they should be Melissa Yisham for the whole family. I'd be asked about Tzedek. Tonight's year is sponsored by Mrs. Rifka Rujin in honor of the safety of our soldiers and brothers and sisters who saw around the world. Hashem should watch over them. Hashem Yishmerehem v'chayem lo'erach yamim v'shanim. We thank Mrs. Rujin for her um, hishtadfus in uh, many, many of the shurim. And uh, Hashem should bless her. Shafa bracha v'atzlacha. Tonight's cheer is also dedicated by Mrs. Yehudit Herman of Yushalayim in honor of Harav Shabtai Herman's 80th birthday on Hey Kislev. Reb Shabtai was uh, one of the great pioneers of Torah and Eretz Yisrael. And he built a mishpacha mefayeres. So we mevarich the Herman family and Reb Shabtai and all of his children and his whole mishpacha, with good health, happiness, um, and long life, I'd be asked Tzedek. And also Hashem should watch over um, all the soldiers, and all the chatufim should return home quickly. And we thank Mrs. Herman, who's one of the most enthusiastic followers of the Shiram. Okay, Parshas Taldais. We're going to, back to Yishmael. Here we go. We're going to be focusing this evening on, a ta- on the Pirkei de Rebbe Lezer. Pirkei Rebbe Lezer says, why is his name Yishmael? Why is his name Yishmael? Says Pirkei Rebbe Lezer, Sha'asid HaKadosh Baruch Hu L'shmaya B'kol Nakas Ha'am Hashem is destined to hear the outcry of the nation. Mima Sha'asidin B'nei Yishmael Lasais Because of what the Yishmaelim are going to do Be'aretz and Eretz Yisrael Be'achras Hayom in the end of days L'fikach Nikra Shema Yishmael why are they called Yishmael? God is destined to hear the prayer of the Jewish people. So there are a few questions over here. Question number one is, that is not what the angel said. The angel did not say, call him Yishmael, because God is destined to hear the prayer of Kal Yisrael. Hashem said, you should call him Yishmael, because God heard your prayer. What indication at all, what reference at all is there to the prayer of the Jewish people? There's no reference even to Klal Yisrael. It's talking about this guy, Yishmael. God heard Hagar's tefillah. V'karas Shemai Yishmael. Ki shama Hashem el onyech. God heard your affliction. Where do we see anything about the Jewish people? When did they appropriate? Furthermore, when did they carry Rabbi Yelazer? Pekar Yelazer is a medrash. It was lit- written by Rabbi Yelazer ben Horkinus. It is the first recorded Torah Shabbat Peh. It was even before the Mishnah. So we're talking more than 1500 years ago. Okay? But the Bnei Yisachar asks an even more basic question. If the Pasuk says, call him Yishmael, Ki Shama, is Shama past or is Shama future? Shama's past. So his name should be Shama Kel. Not Yishmael, not the future, past. The Pasuk says, Call him Yishmael, ki, sh- ki shama Hashem, past tense, not future tense. Where did the future come from? Where is there any indication about anything that's going to happen in the future? So my question is, where is there any indication that Hashem is going to listen to Klal Yisrael's tefillah? That's a valid question. I mean, he's called Yishmael because God sa- told the Malach that Hashem heard Hagar's tefillah. Where do you see anything about Klal Yisrael? There were no Jews there in the desert. There were just Hagar and Yishmael. And furthermore, the Bnei Yisachar asks, why past tense, why future tense should be past tense? So in general, we could ask another question. We know there's a general rule that the name of the wicked needs to be canned. It should rot. It should go on a shelf. You know how in your garage you have shelves of things you're never going to use ever? So just, by the way, just purge them, just throw them out now. Well, why do you, when you go, your kids are going to have to throw them out? Just throw them out now. You have boxes and boxes and boxes. Oh, I might need it. What do you mean you might need it? 
You have v- uh, flower vases. Did you ever go to the store, buy just the thing? Oh, no, just, no, just give me the flowers. I already have a vase at home. Did you ever do that? Nobody does that. But you still save like a hundred vases. So there's a rule. There are things that just sit on the shelf. They just sit there. Says Gemara, the name of the wicked. By the way, any examples I use in the shir have no bearing of anything that takes place in my personal household. But the Gemara says that the name of the wicked should rot. My v'shem Risham Yerkov, Amar Rabbi Lazar, Rekivus Tale B'Shmoisan. Mildew, mold, rot should arise on their name. Delay Maskim Risham. We don't use the name of the wicked. So David, we, we David, I want to ask you a question. Maybe you've heard this question before. So if we don't use the name of the wicked, so why is there a Tana Rabbi Shmuel Aimer? Did you ever hear that question before? Heard that question. Right, Rabbi Shmuel Aimer. Why are we naming? Why would why would Rabbi Shmuel's father? Can you imagine this little baby, beautiful baby? The parents are in the shul. The Rav is about we're I don't know the Tana. I don't know, Rabbi Akiva. You know, we mechabed Rabbi Akiva to for Kriyat Hashem. Mechubed Kriyat Hashem. The Tano Aleki Rabbi Akiva. Everyone, Rabbi Akiva. You have the name? You sure? You know, you you want to tell me before? Yeah. Yeshma. I mean, did Rabbi Akiva? What, what was his reaction to that? Why would somebody be named Rabbi Shmuel Oimer? Rabbi Shmuel. So you say, well, it would seem that that's not such a big problem. Perhaps in light of something we learned last week, that Rabbi Shmuel did, that Yishmael did tshuva. And last week we learned that how do we know Yishmael did tshuva? We'll come to that later in the shir. But this week I want to introduce, not only did Yishmael do tshuva, Hashem promised Avram that Yishmael would do tshuva. Hashem told Avram, you will come to your forefathers in peace. You will be buried b'seva toiva. Says Rashi, Hashem promised Avram that Yeshua, that Yishmael would do tshuva b'yamav. Now, this really um, elicited the following question, because last week we learned that Yishmael did tshuva when they buried Avram, which indicates that Yishmael did tshuva after Avram died. But that's not what Avram was promised. Avram was promised that Yishmael would do tshuva in his lifetime. So the question is, when exactly did Yishmael do tshuva? But now I want to discuss the question of the century. What will be the fate of Yishmael in the end of days? What's going to happen to them? I know there's a lot of discussion out there. I know you get a lot of messages because you send them back to me. And everyone's getting a lot of different uh, sources of information. And the first thing I want to tell you is whatever someone tells you, sends you, you should believe fully. Everything they send you is mamish emes la'amitai. It happened. And, prob- and Hashem wants you to be analyzing it very, very deeply. But besides that, what I want to discuss is what does the Torah say about what will happen to Yishma in the end of days? It says the Meshachachma. This is out of this world. If Yishma did shuva. That what? In the end of days, the Bnei Yishmael will come close to the truth and believe in one God. And they'll separate from idolatry. Like the Rambam writes in a tshuva. Now what tshuva is he talking about? The tshuva that he's talking about is, actually we discussed it in a Monday shir, is, are the Yishma'ilim oivdei avodah zara? No. Are the Yishma'ilim oivdei avodah zara? Yes. No, no. If they touch yayin, is a yayin nesach, comes a chida, and the chida says yes. Also, if you're mechadim shavas, also... Yeah. However, However, the Rambam famously writes in a tshuva. Now, by the way, the Ran, the Ran writes, the Yishmaelim are of the Why? Because even though they believe in one God, 
but the manner with which they worship resembles idolatry because they're always bowing, bowing, bowing. And therefore, even if their belief is not of Zara, their manner of service, the Ran says it is. However, the Rambam writes, it is not Zara. Why? Says the Rambam, even though all the ancient biblical Zara, whether it's Markulas, which is you throw stones at Zara, which is Baal Pa'ar. What's Baal Pa'ar? One that uncovers himself and they defecate in front of Avodah. It's a very, very inspiring type of, of Avodah. Yeah? And then there's um, Kemoish. Not Moish himself. Kemoish is a type of Avodah Zara. These are the three biblical Avodah Zaras. They are all the Avodah Zara of Yishmael. Baal. 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 I don't know about Baal. But oh, Baal, I know, oh, but these Yishmael, three, Yishmael right, I know, but I don't know if that was an Avodah Zarah of Yishmael. The Rambam writes, these three, Baal Pa'ar, Markulis, and Kemoish were all the Avodah Zarah of Yishmael. However, the Rambam says they abandoned all that Avodah Zarah and they believed only in one God. Now, I would have said, Rabbi Isai, that good, Yishmael believes in one God. But that Masay Avay Simon Labanim, that Ba'achris Hayamim, they're gonna come close to Hashem and believe in one Hashem? That they're that Yishmael's Chuva somehow is a reference to Yishmael doing Chuva Ba'achris Hayamim? I wouldn't have said that necessarily. All the Ramam is saying is that Yishmaelim abandoned Avaid Zara, but not that they really uh, did a real full fledged chuva. And by the way, the Meshachachma is quoting the Ramban. I, I personally would not have read the Ramban this way. I would have understood the Ramban, that the Ramban says in the beginning of the sixth millennia, the Yishmaelim will come close to the truth more than the Noitzrim, because the Noitzrim are still like the Abba Zara, and the Yishmaelim are not. But the words of the Meshachachma seem to say that the Tshuva of Yishmael is a Masay of Yishim Labanim, that in the end of days, Yishmaelim will do Tshuva. Really? I guess we're going to have, you know, we're waiting for that. And that was a very eye-opening revelation. That the Yishmaelim in the end of days will do tshuva. And what's the proof? The tshuva of Yishmael portends to the future tshuva of the Yishmaelim. But here was my question. My question is, that I always understood, that in the end of days, there are going to be 70 nations, and the 70 nations will be under... The Malchus of Yisrael. Klal Yisrael will, be, will have Malchus based David, and the nations of the world will have Tikkun through their recognition of Malchus Yisrael. So even though we say that on Sukkot we bring she, a Shivim Parim, that are Mesma'it V'hoilech, connected the 70 nations that seem to be, they're going to diminish. The way we understand that this Herod of David Koyin explains it, that they will come to under the banner of the Jewish people, Vyeyasu Kula Maguda Achas of Shalem, and under our banner they will be they will thrive. But there are two exceptions. There are seventy nations, and we always say from the Vilna Gain, every number seventy has two heads. So for example, God has seventy names, and the two heads are Anivahai. Or there are seventy members of the Sanhedrin, and the two heads are the Nasi and the Abbasdin. There's a concept, 70 always has two heads. You have 70 Jews went down to Egypt, Yaakov and Yosef are that the head. And there's 70 nations, 35 under Yishmael, 35 under Esav. Eile Barachev, Ve'ile Basusim. Okay, 35 and 35. Eile and Eile. This is before Mashiach? When Mashiach comes. Yeah, something, something. Mashahu Kazeh. At the time of the coming of Mashiach. Correct. Now, however, that's the 70 nations. But there'll be two nations that this does not apply to. There'll be two nations that will be, that will completely vanish. One is Esav. How do we know that? We know the Pasuk says, Lo yiya sarid lebeis Esav. There will be no survivors of the house of Esav. Edoim will not survive. How do we know that? The Pasuk, Lo yiya sarid lebeis Esav. Also in Kaihelas. Ein zichra, ein la rishaynim, ve'gam la achraynim, 
There will be no memory of the early ones. Rashi and Kohela says, this refers to Esav, Amalek, that will be completely wiped out. So that's one nation that will not exist. And Rav David Kohen writes, this applies to another nation as well, Yishma. The Zayar HaKadosh says, this is a famous Zayar, the, end, the Zayar on the end of Va'ira. The Zayar in Va'ira says, that in the times of the coming of Mashiach, look at number 12, a nation will ar arise from the ends of the earth. It will attack Edom. It will wage war for three months. All the nations will gather. Edom will conglomerate from all ends of the wor world. And after that, what will happen? Yishma will be destroyed, the Zayar says. <coughs> And all of his power will break. There will be no power from above, only the power of Israel. <coughs> so now, this was something that was occupying my mind for a while. What will happen to Yishma in the end of days? The Meshachachma seems to say, they're going to do tshuva. The Zayar says, they're going down. By the way, I think there's another uh, source that, that Yishmael will not uh, continue. The Slichais on Monday for Bahab, I think we say it, uh, Yom Naram, we say the words in Yisrael Noi Shabbat Shem Tshua Soilamim Gama Yom Yivashu Mipicha Shechein Meroimim Ki Ata Rahab Slichais Then we say we say, Kale Seir V'chaisnai. You know, in the end of this week's parasha, we have a, a wedding made, a match made, not in a good place. Esav decided, Mamish Inveh HaGefen V'inveh HaGefen, he married the daughter of Yishmael. You know, the Gemara says, Lama Halach Oyrev Lagabe Zarzir, you know, Mamish Eitzel Zarzir, what, 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 where do these two people? Matzah min esminai. So in the Slichas we say, Kale Seir v'chaisnai. Destroy Esav and his father in law, and the Shver. Who's the father in law of Esav? Yishmael. So that also indicates that they're both going down. And by the way, in the Afike Yam, which is Rabbi Yitzhak Isaac Chaver, he also explicitly writes. Then the end of days, be the two powers of Esav and Yishmael, the Shar and the Chamar, the Haim Asher Yichlu Laasid Lavai. So, how do we reconcile this? Do we say, like the Mesha Chachma, that Yishmael's Tshuva portends, and the end of days, Yishmaelim will do Tshuva? Or will the Yishmaelim suffer the same fate as Esav? So, how do we reconcile the Mesha Chachma and the sources that Yishmael will be destroyed? And I think there are two, uh, two approaches. And one of them is Mamish out of this world. Approach number one. Last week we learned Yishmael did Shuvah. How do we know he did Shuvah? Because he let Yitzchak go first in burying his father. As the Mesha Chachma explained, because Yishmael always contested, Yishmael always contested that, Esau, that Yitzchak is the rightful heir. So the fact that he allowed Yitzchak to go first, that means he acknowledged that Yitzchak is the rightful heir. But that's the, the opinion that, that Yishmael did Shuvah. Comes the Ritva. The Ritva says, why would we call a Tana Yishmael? Says the Ritva. You know why? The, the, father, the, God, the dad who called his son Yishmael holds like the opinion that Yishmael did tshuva. Ah, oh, what do you mean he holds like the opinion that Yishmael did tshuva? Yishmael did tshuva! No, not necessarily. It's a shita that he did tshuva. But that doesn't mean everyone agrees. Because the Ritva gives a second answer. Inami, Yishmael is different. God called him Yishmael. God called him Yishmael. Meaning, really, Yishmael is a Russia. And he didn't do tshuva. So why could you name after him? Because God gave the name. So we see from the Ritva that it's not unanimous 
that you shmal did tshuva. Not only that, the Taisus Yishanim in Yuma doesn't bring the first answer. Taisus Yishanim asks, how could, according to the, the Taisus Yishanim says, if Yishmael didn't do tshuva, how could there be a Tana Rabbi Yishmael? Because Hashem gave the name. That means the Taisus Yishanim is paskening, Yishmael did not do tshuva. Yishmael never did tshuva. Yeah, except Yishmael. He, he expired. Your orange juice also sometimes by Yigva. Right? On, on all the me- go, go into um, your medicine cabinet. Nine, nine out of the ten things expired seven years ago. They were by Yigva. Right? But people take them anyway because. Wait, was it Yishmael or Tana? We're going to see. <laughs> the Taras Chaim, one of the Kadmoinim on the Gemara, asks a very interesting Gemara. The Gemara says, a son could save a father. If a son's a tzaddik, he bails out the dad. A father who's a tzaddik is not Mazaka the son. Why? Avraham is not Matzel Yishmael. Ask the Torah's Chaim, what do you mean Avraham is not Matzel Yishmael? Yishmael doesn't need Hatzalah. He did Tshuva. What do you mean Avraham is not Matzel Yishmael? What does Yishmael need uh, uh, Hatzalah for? If anything, Yishmael is greater than Avraham. Because Avraham didn't do tshuva. He was a tzaddik his whole life. Yishmael did tshuva. Says the, the Taras Chaim, it's doichik to say that this Gemara argues on Rabbi Yochanan who says Yishmael did tshuva. Meaning the Taras Chaim, a does not want to entertain the possibility that Yishmael did not do tshuva. And furthermore, you have to say Yishmael did tshuva, because how could you have a Tana, Rabbi Yishmael? Comes Rabbi Kivager. And Rabbi Kivager says, what do you mean how could you have a Tana named uh, Yishmael? Don't you know the Taisus Yishanim? Hashem gave the name. And therefore it says Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Kivager, there is no proof for sure that Yishmael did tshuva could be really Yishmael did not do tshuva. <coughs> so they named they named him. Yishmael. It could be he didn't do tshuva because, because, because God gave the name. Because God gave the name. By the way, Rabbi Kivager on Shulchan Aruch Paskins, like the Toisus Yishanim, that if you have a name of so a name like Yishmael, says Rabbi Kivager that a, a Russia had it, and a Tzaddik had it, you could use the name. And he quotes the Toysus Yishanim. What do you mean? But Yishmael did tshuva. Now, nah, Rabbi Kivager is not going with that lahalacha. So it seems like it's not Pashut that Yishmael did tshuva. I, the Gemara Baba Basra says, Kal Misa, like Rabbi Shmuel asks, Sheyesh Bagvia Zuhi Misas and Shal Tzaddikim. But the Gemara asks on that, by the Dar Hamabu it also says, Vayigva. No, so the Gemara says, but whenever it says, Vayigva, Vayayasef. So the Gemara says, what about Yishmael? Rabbi Yochanan says he did Shuva. Then the Gemara asks, what's the proof? Proof is, because uh, Yishmael let Yitzchak go first. The Gemara says, well, maybe they, they're, they're just counting it, Derech Masai. Okay, the bottom line is, it seems at least like it's not definitive that Yishmael did tshuva. According to that we asked, what will the fate of Yishmael be? Do we say like the Meshachachma, that the fact that Yishmael did tshuva means in the end of days he'll do tshuva? Or do we say like the Lashon of the Slicha is Kale Seyer V'choysnoi? Do we say like the Zayar? Could be it's Machlekes. According to the opinion Yishmael did tshuva, then in the end of days, the Yishmaelim will do tshuva. According to the opinion that Yishmael never did tshuva, so in the end of days, they're done. I have a different approach. You ready for this? No. I have a different approach. You ready for my approach? This is what I've been thinking about. What will be the fate of Yishmael in the end of days? Do we say, well, Yishmael did tshuva, so then, so then, will do tshuva. Or do we say, no, it's not Pashat. The Gemara says that Avram can't save Yishmael. What do you mean? Yishmael doesn't need to be saved. That Gemara's mashma Yishmael didn't do tshuva. So I have a question today. 
Are the Yishmaelim doing tshuva or are they not doing tshuva? The answer is, it depends what country they come from. Some Yishmaelim, they sign the Abraham Accords and they recognize Eretz Yisrael and they shoot down missiles, so they're doing tshuva. And some Yishmaelim are, they don't seem to be involved in the tshuva process, let's say, of the Rabbeinu Yoyna and the Shari Tshuva, of Aziva Sachet, Charata, Kabbal al Asid, Yagoin, Tikkun Hachet, Tshuva Samishkal. It doesn't seem like they're embarking on a very thorough process of tshuva. So it will probably be Yesh Vyesh. The Yishmaelim that don't do tshuva, you want to know what's going to happen to them? We see what's happening to them. Yichlus, Kale Soyer Vachoisnoi. But Yishmaelim, some could do tshuva, and maybe they'll be very successful. And like the Meshach Chachma says, Masei Avay Simen Labanim. So it could be, there are two available paths for the Yishmaelim. And we see both paths. Some are taking advantage of one path, and some are taking advantage of another path. I mean, that's what the Meshach Chachma says. In the end of days, there will be Yishmaelim that do tshuva. Well, that's what they say. Yeah, I was going to talk about that, but maybe we'll talk about it next but, week. But if you're talking about Ishmael, the name before Ishmael, the Tana Ishmael was Sefer Melachim. Ishmael bin Matana that killed the Gedalia. He's a Russian. Yeah, but he didn't end up too good. He was a coin also. The, there's also Yis, Yasser HaYishmaeli. Okay, there's a very interesting Shaila in Shal Sechuz B'Samim Reish, which is uh, usually attributed to the Rush, but we know the Rush did not write it. Why is it that you have a Rebbe Yishmael and there's no Rebbe Esav in the Gemara? Why do you have Rebbe Yishmael and not Rebbe Esav? So he gives a very interesting answer that the word Yishmael inherently has a very good meaning to it, that God will hear your tefillah. However, the word Esav does not have a good meaning to it. And then it was asked on him, why not? Well, Yitzchak and Rivka sure thought it had a good meaning to it, that's why they gave the name. So, it seems like it doesn't have such a positive meaning. Okay, now regarding Yishmael did Shuva, I want to share with you a Dvar Torah that Rabbi David Weber shared with me this week. But I sort of brushed him off because... Uh, I didn't know who it was coming from. <laughs> Avery. Give, give a shout out to Avery. Avery? We'll Avery. give a shout out to Avery. But that, that still wouldn't get into the share. But I, I found that when Yonis uh, Nibeshitz was a young man and his prospective father-in-law came to him and was testing out whether he knows how to learn or not. So Yonis Nibeshitz said, uh, I guess he was very confident, and uh, he says to the prospective father-in-law, you know, the Fanlo says, uh, what should I test you on? So Rabbi Yonis and I said, you give me any book, I'll ask you two questions, and then I'll ask you a third question that will answer the first two questions. So this is from Rabbi Yonis and Ibishitz. Question number one is, how could there be a Tana named after Yishmael? Question number two is, why do we say every morning, Rabbi Yishmael Oimer, which indicates Rabbi Shmuel is arguing on somebody. He doesn't argue on it, so it should be Amar Rabbi Shmuel. And number three, he has this rule, Klal Uprat. When you have a general rule and a specific rule, then that whatever, the Ein Shab Beprat El Mashabachla. But how do you know it's a Klal Uprat? Maybe Ein Muktam Mo'ochar Batayra, and it's really the other way around. How could you ever darshan a Klal Uprat? So Rabbi Yonis and Ibishit says the third question will answer the first two. Why? You know how you can have a Tana named Rabbi Shmuel? Because he did tshuva. And therefore you can name after him. So you say, how do you know Yishmael did tshuva? Because first it says Yitzchak, and then it says Yitzchak, but maybe ain't muktam or Must be in one pasuk, there is an order. Oh, one pasuk is an order? Then you kadash and klal uprat. Therefore, you know why Rabbi Shmuel Oimer? You know why he would say this? He would say this because he wanted everyone to know why his name was Rabbi Shmuel. His name was Rabbi Shmuel because Yishmuel did tshuva. Yishmuel did tshuva. How do we know? We know Yishmuel because Ein Muktam Because Muktam Ma'ochar B'Tayra B'Chad Enyin. 
Again, but this is taking the view that Yishmael did tshuva. But again, it's not so simple that Yishmael did tshuva. And it could be his name was Rabbi Yishmael. Why? Because God gave the name. Now, my friend uh, Rabbi Yitzchak Samet told me today that why do we have to prove Yishmael did tshuva from the fact that it says first Yishmael, first Yitzchak and then Yishmael? We know Yishmael did tshuva. Because at the Akedah, Avram took two guys with him, Eliezer and Yishmael. Now, he already chased him out. Sorrow chased him out. Goresh ben Amazois. So how did he get back? He must have done tshuva. So why do we need to go and prove that from the Levaya? And I would say that's such a good question because he had to have done tshuva in the lifetime of Avram Avinu because that's what Avram Avinu was promised. Avram wasn't promised that Yishmael was going to do tshuva after he died. Avram was promised that he's going to do tshuva in his lifetime. So Rav Schwab asks this question. Rav Schwab says, well, there's room to be circumspect that Yishmael came home and he only acted properly out of respect for Avraham. So therefore, we need to go and see that, really, we need to know that Yishmael did Shuvah in Avraham's lifetime. But how could we know he did Shuvah in Avraham's lifetime? That we see from the fact he was at the Akedah. But maybe it was a fake? No, we see it wasn't a fake, because even after Avraham died, Yishmael let Yitzchak go ahead of him. Why did he associate him with a Hamar? He called him a Hamar. There are a lot of righteous chamayim. What? <laughs> could be he did tshuva. What? He did tshuva. Why did he call him a chamayim? He, he, he said he told him to stay with the chamayim. He called him. Yeah. Oh, stay with him. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think th this, this piece is a little bit of a, I would call it a loose end. Avram was promised Yishma with the tshuva in his lifetime. But Chazal never show where we see that Yishmael did tshuva in the lifetime of Avram Avinu. The same. Was he buried? Uh, he, he, he was yeah, but that wasn't his life. Yeah, but Avram wasn't alive. How do we see Yishmael did tshuva in the life of Avram? See, I don't have all the answers. He just came. Right, right. He just came. So you mean it's not a proof that he did tshuva? It wasn't real. It wasn't real tshuva when he came back. Right. So, the, so what real evidence is there that he did tshuva in the life of Avram? Okay. What now, Isaac, you something you told me, okay? I'm, I'm stirring it all, all up. Okay. Let's now come back to a very interesting question. So now that we've already determined what's going to happen to Yishma, right here in the Young Israel of Woodmere at 9, 10 p.m. on Wednesday night, what's today's date? November 15th. What's the date in Lashna Kodesh? We're in the month of Kislev. Now it's Gimel, right? Yeah. Gimel Kislev. We've determined what's going to happen to Yishmael in the end of days. So basically, this is a good plug for them all to sign the Abraham Accords. You know, they have two choices. They could follow the, the shitas that Yishmael did in Tuchuva. It's not a good ending. Or they could do it, or Masayavah Sinman Lamanah. I just have to add, brother. I, I, I read last week that the Arabs just had a recent, very recently, a big meeting. And uh, they came up to, to uh, Israel to condemn Israel. Yeah. And the people that voted against it yeah. were all the guys from the Abraham Accord. All those countries voted against so then they, Israel at that meeting. It's not a good tshuva, you know. It's up to them. It's not up to me. These are the it's two paths. These are the these are the two uh, these are the two paths that's available to them. Now I want to talk about you know uh, this terrible tragedy that happened on October seventh on Shmini Atzeres on Simchas Torah on the most joyous day of the year. How could such a terrible thing happen? And we're discovering that it could have been a lot worse. I mean, the plan, they had plans to go to the Shomron. They had the plans to carry out attacks on a much wider scale. They had plans to go to uh, a yeshiva on Simchas Torah. So in a way, even though it was a terrible tragedy, it could have been uh, of, of even greater proportions. There's a very interesting kavana that Darizal says to have 
when you're making hakafais on the Yamtif of Sukkis, especially on Hoshana Rabbah, that Rizal says to be Mechavein in the name Kale. And not just Kale, Kale B'miluai. Kale B'miluai is Aleph, Aleph Lamed Pei, which is 111, and Lamed, Lamed Mem Dalid, which is 74. 111 and 74 is 185. Hekaf. That on the Yom Tif of Sukkot, when you're going around the Bima, you should be Mechavein to the name Kael. Kael B'miluai Aleph Lamed, spelled out Aleph Lamed Pei, Lamed Mem Dalid, is He Kuf Pei, 185, protection. In other words, by encircling the Bima on the Yom Tif of Sukkot, especially on Hoshana Rabbah, it gives us unusual protection for the eighth day, the protection of He Kuf Pei, Hekaf. That's Kale Bimiluai. That's very interesting. Now, when Hashem told Avraham that he's going to have a son Yitzchak, look at number 27. But Sarah, your wife, will have a son. I'm going to establish my covenant with him. For everlasting covenant, Lazaroy Achrov and his children after him. So to Yitzchak, I'm going to make an everlasting covenant. But Uli Yishmael, Shematicha. Regarding Yishmael, I listened to you. He nebe rachti oisai, blessed him. Vefreisi oisai, I multiplied him. Veherbeisi oisai, and increased him. Bimaoid maoid. There are going to be a lot of those guys. Vesbrisi, Akimes Yitzchak, but my covenant I'm going to seal with Yitzchak. Rashi's bothered. God already said He's going to make a covenant with Yitzchak. Why does He have to say again, Es brisi akim es Yitzchak? Good question, right? Pasuk Yud Tess, it says, V'haki moisi es brisi itay levris oilam lezaray acharav. And then, regarding Yishmael, I will bless him, I will increase him, but Yitzchak, my covenant I will seal with Yitzchak. So Rashi says, what is this teaching us? First God says, I'm going to seal a covenant with Yitzchak. Then Hashem says, I'm going to make a covenant with Yishmael to multiply them, increase them, make them successful. And Kal I'm going to make a covenant with Yitzchak. Kal I'm going to make a covenant with Yitzchak. So, in our shiur in Parshas Lechacha, on Friday, we have a shiur called Imponderables. We asked, why would you need a Kal that Hashem will make a covenant with Yitzchak, if the Pasuk before says he's going to make a covenant with Yitzchak. Right? Pasuk Yotes, God says, I'm going to make a covenant with Yitzchak. Then Hashem says, I'm going to bless Yishmael. And Kavachoymer, I'm going to make a covenant with Yitzchak. What do you need a Kavachoymer for? We, you have a Pasuk. God, you know, you know what a Kavachoymer is? Kavachoymer is, you know what a Kavachoymer is? An a fortiori argument. That if a minor league player who didn't start taking steroids yet could hit a home run, so Kava Chaymer, a major leaguer, who's been injecting with that stuff for many, many years, certainly he could hit a home run. That's a Kava Chaymer. Right? <laughs> that's, a, I, of course, I don't know about these things. Somebody, somebody told me. <laughs> so, that's a Kava Chaymer, meaning Madacha, if the small guy could do it, the big guy could do it. So why do I need a Kavachaymer that Hashem is going to make a covenant with Yitzchak? The Pasuk says Hashem is going to make a covenant with Yitzchak. So, because, Rabbi, because then, because after he gave the bris to Yitzchak, <coughs> he then blessed um, Yishmael. Yishmael. So if he's blessing Yishmael, then maybe he's forgetting about... Uh, well, he, he said, I make a covenant with you, so why is he forgetting? blessing Yishmael. So which one is it, Yishmael or Yitzchak? Both! So, Rabbi Isaac Yoselovsky showed me a, a sheet from the Shvilei Pinchas and Parshas Lachlacha, who he brings that the Bnei Yisachar asked this question. The Bnei Yisachar wants to know, why do I need a Kav for Yitzchak if there's an explicit Pasuk for Yitzchak? Says the Bnei Yisachar, very beautiful. Because the Pasuk said, I make a covenant with Yitzchak, Lezaroi Acharav, when his children follow after him. But if his children don't follow after him, all bets are off. But luckily Hashem says, I make 
I'm going to bless Yishmael. They're going to be blessed, successful, multiply. Kavachoymer to Klal Yisrael. Now that Kavachoymer is irrespective of how our children act. Because as bad as we are, we'll always be better than them. So the reason why we need a Kavachoymer, even though we have an explicit Pasuk, because the explicit Pasuk is only Lazarai Acharov, is only if the children follow in your ways after you. So the Rebbe Shem wanted to protect us. And the ultimate protection of the Jewish people is the Kavachoymer from Yishmael. You hear this? If you want to know, what, when all is said and done, what is the ultimate protection on Klal Yisrael? The ultimate protection is the Kavachoymer that HaKadosh Baruch Hu told Avram. That I know I'm making a covenant with you if your children follow after you. And if your children don't follow after you, if I'm blessing very generously Yishmaelim, then for sure you get it. Now, a great principle that we learned many, many times is that the 13 Midois of Rachamim correspond to the 13 Midois Shehatayr Nidrash Yisbahim. So in other words, there are 13 <coughs> hermeneutical principles of exegesis. Whatever that means, right? <laughs> there are 13 Midois with which the, the Hashem gave Klal Yisrael to Darshan the Torah. The first one is Kav Choymer. The second one is Gzeir Shava. The third one is... Third one is Binyanav. Klal Uprat. Who taught them? Rabbi Shmuel. What's the first of the Yud Gimel Midois Harachamim? Kael. Now Toysva says Hashem Hashem. But the Arizal says Kael. And Hashem Hashem are the two fathers. So, the, the, the Maggid of Mezrich would say, Moshe Rabbeinu daven ta Hashem keel na refana. He wanted to arouse the Midah of Kel. God says, Why you, what, you want to arouse the Midah of Kel? The aviha yaraik yarak b'faneha aloisi kam shavazim. Learn the laws of Kav HaChoymer. Madach, if her father, Miriam's father, would have spit at her, she would have gone into seclusion for seven days. So it's Kav HaChoymer. Now that I'm angry at her, Miriam has to go into seclusion at least 14 days. So we, we, we see from here a very important principle that the 13 Midas of Rachamim correspond to the 13 Midas Shatar Nidrash Bahem. And if you want to arouse the Midas of Rachamim, you learn the 13 Midas Shatar Nidrash Bahem. Therefore, says the Bnei Saskar, on the Yom Tif of Sukkis, when we're trying to get protection from the nations of the world, the main avoida of the Yom Tif of Sukkot is to be protected from the 70 Umais. You go around the Bima and you're Mechavein Hekif, 185. 185 is Kel Bimiluai. 31. What, uh, Kel is Aleph. Aleph, Aleph, Lamed, pay 111. Lamed is 74, 185. You're supposed to be thinking kale when you do the hakafais. That protects you from the nations of the world. How? Because kale corresponds to Kav And when you arouse the Kav Hashem says, if I need to give the Yishma'elim bracha v'hatzlacha, Kav to Kal Yisrael. So says the Bnei Yisachar, the reason why on the Yom Tif of Sukkot, we're supposed to think kale when we're soivev the bima, when we do hakafos. Because since the purpose of the Yom Tif of Sukkot is to gain protection from the 70 nations of the world, and the way to be protected is to remind Hashem of the Kav from Yishmael. Therefore, when you're doing the hakafos, you should be mechavein, you're going around the bima, to be ma'oira the midah of kale. You think hekaf, hey kof pei, which is kel b'miluai. In other words, if you want to know, what do we gain by doing hakafos? One thing's for sure, we gain protection from Ishma. If you're saying kel over there... One second. One second. So isn't it, you think it's a coincidence that Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Shmuel Haya Oimer, Rabbi Shmuel is the one who, so to speak, showed that the Yishmaelim did tshuva. The first thing he teaches is Kavachoymer, which is Ma'ayra, the Midah of Kael, which is protection from Yishmael. You think it's a coincidence that the first teaching 
of Rabbi Yishmael is Kal which is the very protection we're seeking from Yishmael. It's also interesting that the Iker day of the Hakafos is Hashanah Rabbah, where we take an Arava. And Arava has no mitzvahs and no Masim Toivim. You know why? It's the only day that we could say to Hashem, even without mitzvahs and without Masim Toivim, since we're doing Hakafos and we're Ma'ura, the Midah of Kale, then even without any mitzvahs, we're better than them. So Hashanah Rabbah is the day that we activate the greatest protection against Hishma. So, you know, in a certain, and not only that, we don't even make a bracha on the Hishanas. Why? Because we say to Hashem, on this day, we don't even have to do mitzvahs to be protected. That's why we don't make a bracha. So on the one hand, it seems ironic. Because the Bnei Yisachar says that after Hoshana Rabbah, we are so protected from the nations of the world. Ein satan ve'ein pegara. But on the other hand, could it be that the Rebbe Hashem, in His infinite mercy on the Jewish people, orchestrated that if something had to happen, the Rebbe Hashem wanted us to have maximum possible protection. So Rebbe Hashem made sure that right before we had Hashanah Rabbah, and we had the Hakafos of Simchas Torah, and unfortunately it was a terrible disaster, but we see it could have, what it could have been, what they're capable of, what they wanted to do. So you say, well, that's a sort of an unusual way of looking at things. We learned in, in this year, less than a, maybe a year ago, from Abchaim Falaji, that the reason why Hashem always arranged that the blood libels take place Pesach time is Hashem wants us to have maximum protection. So He makes it that if it has to happen, it happens at a time that it's Leil Shimurim. So that if it has to happen, we have maximum protection. So if there's a day that we, that we could gain maximum protection from Yishmael, it would be the day after Hashan Rabbah. So, I think that's something... This is, a, this is more positive. Yeah? So these are some things to think about. First of all, what will the fate be of Yishmael in the end of days? The Meshachachma sees in the tshuva of Yishmael that somehow this is a pre-enactment and the end of days, Shebnei Yishmael Ba'achz Yom Yiskarvu Lo Ha'emes. I would have thought that means it happened already through the religion. But the words of Meshachachma indicate that perhaps they will do tshuva. Doesn't seem to be consistent with many sources. For example, Kale Seir V'chaisnai. We, we brought a number of Rishonim that it's not definitive, in fact, that Yishmael did tshuva. If it's not definitive, then maybe the opinion that Yishmael will do tshuva is according to those shitos that Yishmael did tshuva. Or we said it could be, in fact, you know, there are two paths that are available. And another interesting thing is the idea that the Yom Tif of Sukkis, especially Hoshana Rabbah, is Ma'ayur the Midah of Kale, and Kale awakens Kal v'choymer. and the specific Kal v'choymer that Kalish Baruch Hu blesses Kal Yisrael with is that if I, may, if I bless the Yishma'ilim, Kal v'choymer, I bless you, and that is ultimately our greatest protection, says the Bnei Yisachar. Now we understand, he doesn't quote the Perk of the Rebbe Lezer. He says, we asked, that he's called Yishmael, that God will listen to our prayer in the future. That's not what he told the Malach. Didn't Hashem tell the Malach that Hashem heard your tefillah? In the, so number one, in the past tense. And we asked, it's referring to, to Hagar's tefillah, not our tefillah. So the Bnei Yisachar says yes. But implicit in the birth of Yishmael is a Kav HaChaymer. And that Kav HaChaymer is that if God's going to listen to his tefillah, Allah has kama v'kama, he listens to our tefillah. So therefore, even though, specifically, it's ki shama Hashem alon yech, the kal v'choymer says, that if he listens shama, Allah has kama v'kama, yishama lanu. 
Says Bnei Yisachar, therefore the name, the Ikra name, the main name of Yishmael is Yishma Kel, God will listen to our tefillah. So in other words, whatever you see in Yishmael, whatever temporal success, whatever kayach they have, in that, implicit in that is the Esbrisi Akim Es Yitzchak Im Leben HaShivcha Kein Kavachaymer Leben HaGavira so these are some, uh, some ideas about the fate of Yishmael and Be'ezus Hashem, our even greater success, the Achras Hayamim. So we should be zoicha, as the Balaturim says in the end of Parshas Chayisara, Kishenafal Yishmael Besoif Yamav Az Yitzmach Ben David Mher Amen. Amen. No, 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 no. Yeah.